we've been talking about this foreclosure wave for a while and it took a little bit longer, but this property right here, there's a notice of default for almost a million dollars and it's not even finished. One of seven properties in this last month's report. That doesn't include the first five that we've already seen, but this property right here, not finished, has a notice of default for almost a million dollars and what else is gonna happen? Here's the crazy thing. Over 10,000 vacant lots sitting in the Treasure Valley without a building permit. And now all of these other developments that we're getting ready to expose aren't even finished and there's a notice of default on them. What's gonna to happen to the market? How does that affect you? How does that affect you as a home buyer or a potential seller? The biggest thing that you gotta remember is if these projects can't get finished and we already have 10,000 vacant lots without residential permits pulled on them, well then construction is gonna start slowing down and it might start slowing down faster and faster as more of these developments go into notice of default, get foreclosed, and go back to the bank. I'm standing in front of the hidden foreclosure market. Right behind me is a fourplex that couldn't get finished because the developer ran out of money and they didn't look at what the market's doing. They finished this property. This property went up for sale as a fourplex. They couldn't sell it as a fourplex. They tried to convert it into a condo and now they couldn't even sell it as a condo and now you can go buy it at a trustee sale. The final inspection was done in 2023. So this property has been sitting here, finished since 2023. Remember, we talked about a foreclosure wave coming at the beginning of 2023. Well, one thing we forgot is it takes a while for the pain to happen and foreclosures to start happening. So although that was finished in 2023, they stopped working on this probably in 2023 as well. And they haven't even started those in 2023. And now we're sitting in 2024 and they're all going in to foreclosure. Not only did they start another project, couldn't finish it because they couldn't sell this because the market changed so much. You have two pads that are ready to go to start going vertical where you could get two other fourplexes built. The developer didn't see what's coming. They didn't see the state of the housing market. Matter of fact, do you see what the state of the housing market is now that we've been exposing these developments going into foreclosure. We told you guys to wait for the deals to come. It's ready for you to buy at a trustee sale. The trustee sale is July 16th of 2024. It took a while for it to actually come to fruition, but we told you this foreclosure wave's coming. And as more and more properties like this come, we will be explaining and exposing so that you might be able to pick up a deal. What does that mean for you as the everyday buyer or seller? Well, what it means for you is if more and more properties come into foreclosure as we've been seeing, then the home prices and the development costs and the land costs are all gonna start going down. And when those go down, so do resells and the builders who are stuck on the inventory. This is one of seven projects just this month, and that's one of 12 projects so far this year that have gone into foreclosure. I'm not just talking about single family homes. I'm talking about builders who maybe started building, developers who have developed, but yet couldn't sell the properties what their original performer was because 2022 prices are no longer here and we've been on a declining market. This California investor are getting stuck with lots that are finished and they're going into pre-foreclosure. This particular investor has five properties throughout the Treasure Valley that has a pre-foreclosure notice on it, and they've gone into a notice of default. More and more of this is gonna hit the market as we see home prices, values go down, interest rates stay high, and investors are gonna be stuck with this. This particular development has 60 finished lots and no construction. This California investor thought maybe that the Boise market is never gonna change. As interest rates continue to change, investors like this are gonna be stuck with inventory like this, especially when there's 10,000 vacant lots in the market here in the Treasure Valley. My question to you is, how many of those 10,000 vacant lots are these developers on the verge of pre-foreclosure? The Boise area has over 3,000 apartments that are currently under construction, and that wouldn't be a big deal, except we have 38,000 apartments as inventory currently as it sits, and 10% of those are sitting vacant. When you add 10% of our current inventory, on top of what's already built and 10% of the already built is vacant, all of a sudden we're gonna have a massive amount of vacancy problem. If they can't get people in, you're gonna see more and more move-in specials where they're giving one, two months free rent or they're waiving the deposit. You see these kind of things happen. It's gonna change our market drastically because that's gonna affect single family rental prices as well. People often ask me, what's going on with the great migration? Are people still moving here? Yes, people are moving here, but we have a lot of people moving back. Matter of fact, we just had a conversation with somebody who moved up here a year ago and now they're moving their family back because they miss their community, they miss their friends, they miss their family. 
and we're seeing more and more people move up here, realize this isn't California because it's not, and they want to move back to their community. All right, let's talk about the residential market and why are we seeing home prices increase even though foreclosures are rising. The median sales price in Ada County has actually increased about 14.9% year over year. And so why is this happening when we're seeing foreclosures rise? What's going on with inventory? What's going on with buyer demand? Is buyer demand increasing? And is that what's causing this? And is it, is it sustainable? First thing that we're gonna look at is for all single family residents, for all single family. So this is for Ada County. This is resale and existing home sales. The sales numbers are actually down 14% year over year. So that means we're on year three of a continuum where home sales are continually to decline. So even though we see a rise in the home prices, we're also seeing a decline in sales. With the decline in sales, we're also seeing a rise in inventory. This is both resale and new construction. Inventory is up 11.5%. I believe that inventory is gonna increase even more. Some people that bought in the last year and got locked in to a mortgage, a mortgage is twice as much as what you could rent for, are deciding, you know what? I need to just count my losses and sell my house. We've had conversations about with people is that with this recent lawsuit with the NAR, people are thinking, okay, let's go ahead and list our house and we're gonna save the 3% by paying it, um, by, by not having to pay a buyer's commission. Fasten passenger seat belt. Our inventory is currently up year over year. Yes, our sales price is up year over year, but keep in mind, as these developments and as these home builders are going into foreclosure or having properties go in the notice of default, that's gonna start driving prices down. Lenders and you know, agent experts have been talking about rates are gonna drop, rates are gonna drop. As a matter of fact, they thought rates were already gonna start dropping for the 30 year mortgage, but yet they haven't. They're probably gonna stay. Maybe we'll see three price cuts by the end of the year, but more than likely, I think we're gonna probably be in the seven, right? You know, we're, we're floating right now around the seven and a quarter and at seven and a half percent. Let's go ahead and break down the difference between residential uh, resale and residential new construction in Ada County. One thing I wanna really focus in on is month supply of inventory. And what you'll see is it has increased. For the resale, it's increased 25%. The reason why you wanna look at this and not just solds and not just pendings is because what it takes this data from and it says, okay, these are the number of solds we've had. This is the a number of inventory that we have. Now let's divide that and that's how many months it's gonna take for the current buyers in the market to absorb the inventory on the market. We've seen a 25% increase year over year from March 23 to March 24. New construction, we've seen a jump from 2.3 months to almost three months, and that's a 26.7% uh, increase year over year. You always gotta watch to know, are we currently seeing a crazy amount of buyers come in? Is our builders still offering incentives? Are they offering different kinds of incentives? Boise Hunter Homes, for instance, is offering a full 1% rate buy down if you were to buy one of their spec homes because they're trying to get their inventory moved. If there was a lot of buyer demand in the market, you wouldn't be seeing this happening. You wouldn't be seeing builders offering those great of incentives to try to get their inventory moved. Some of these uh, builders are offering up to $45,000 in seller concessions just to get things. And part of the reason why is the number of sales on the new construction side is down 20% year over year. So buyer demand has really gone down. Again, some of you have called and said, but Josh, I've been watching property and all of a sudden it moved. And so I don't wanna be naive to the fact that at the beginning of this year, there was a bunch of people who jumped into the market who had been waiting and they thought, okay, you know, the market's not not moving. Like like the market, the, the uh, rates are what they are and we're probably gonna see decline. So we need to jump in the housing market before the rates drop. A couple weeks after this plethora of buyers jumped into the market, what we end up seeing is a 75 basis points or 75.75% increase in the interest rate and these buyers pull back again. People are still buying right now, but the number of solds are decreasing and that's something that you really wanna pay attention to. Caney County single family homes numbers are, are in. What we see is there's been a 17% decline of home sales year over year. 
which again is showing that the buyer demand is dropping. Again, a handful of homes went pending. According to stats on the pendings, the pendings are up 6%. Here's an interesting thing. So Ada County had jumped about 15%. Canning County as a whole only jumped about 4.7%. And keep in mind that Canning County, because it's on the outskirts, so those are home, those home sale prices are gonna decline faster than Ada County. The other thing that we wanna look at is inventory. It's up 21%. So inventory jumped 21% in Canning County compared to what it was a year ago, and that's for both resale and new construction. Let's break down this just a little bit. The resale homes are down 22%. And what people would like to make you believe is the reason why they're down 22% is because inventory is down too. Inventory jumped 29%, but yet home sales are down 22%. And the pendings are only up 5%. We're sitting right here in front of a bunch of foundations that got dug. We went and we showed you a handful of developments that are going into foreclosure. We talked about the apartment complex that went into foreclosure. People are tired of waiting. But when you look at these signs, when you look at how Canyon County is reacting. Ada County, yes, the home sale price went up, but there's so many other factors that are at play here that people aren't seeing. We want to make sure that you are fully exposed to what we see here in the Treasure Valley and really what's going on in the world. There are a lot of people that are out there that are tired of waiting and they're just jumping into the housing market. Things are happening. Sometimes they don't happen as fast as maybe you'd like if you're waiting, but they are happening. And if you just look at the median sales price, then you're gonna miss out. Like that's gonna create a FOMO in you and you're gonna jump in the housing market without looking at all the other aspects, right? So we talked about 10,000 vacant lot inventory. That's increased and that's almost double of what we saw. We've seen apartment complexes that can't get sold. We're seeing that we have 10% vacancy rate on the apartment buildings and yet there's about 10% currently under construction. Based on that, the vacancy rate should increase. The other thing that we can look at is the incentives, the incentives that builders are giving, the incentives that apartment owners are giving, and both builders and apartment owners are giving incentives to either move their inventory or get you in to their apartment. Look at that and not just the median sales price because our sales numbers are down. Year over year, they're down. We're hurting, right? Agents are hurting, lenders are hurting, title companies are hurting because the refinance market has completely dried up. Lenders lost that whole stack of business. Title companies lost that stack of business. And then when sales numbers are down for the third year in a row, sales numbers are down. Even though maybe prices are rising, a lot of us are hurting out here as agents, builders, developers, title companies, lenders. Don't just focus on the median sales price, but look at all the other things, the pendings, the solds, the active inventory, the hidden inventory that we just exposed to you. And maybe, just maybe, you might get a better deal by waiting than jumping into the market.